Hi, Troy from the Do It Yourself World and the Off Grid Project. I want to apologize, I haven't talked about the batteries in a while. I am known as a man of extremes. I either show something too much or I don't show it enough. And uh, I usually just come out here once a week and I top off the batteries. Forklift batteries do use a lot of water. Once a week, I'll go through a half a gallon or so of water. They're not below the plates. I keep them well above, though. Um, the negative terminal is always way, way low. And then using less and less as it moves towards the positive for some reason. Uh, the forklift battery is standing up, but it's ranging around 12.1 volts by morning time with the power inverter on and uh, all the other equipment on. This battery never rests at above 12.2, no matter what. And uh, it just is how it is with this battery. That's how it was when I got it, and I definitely have to contact the, uh, the dealer. But forklift batteries are gonna cost you in distilled water. A half a gallon a week, you're going to go through in this heat. Today was 97 degrees out, and I'm going through a half a gallon of distilled water a week. It's only a dollar a week, or 50 cents, 50 cents a week. Not a big deal. Not really a big deal. But I still have to maintain them regularly. Now, I'll go inside on a later date soon, I promise soon. And I'll give you a full update on how the batteries are handling and how much power I'm pulling in. I'll show you on a computer on a sunny day how much power I bring in and how much I use and everything else. So I'll be doing that soon. Just wanted to give you an update on, you know, I am maintaining the battery. Uh, I am going to build the battery into a box, into a, a housing here. The porch that I'm going to build around the entire house will also enclose the battery. So that answers a lot of questions I've been seeing. Yes, I'm going to put the battery in an enclosure before winter. Right after I get the chicken wire and electric fence done, then I finish the house siding on these two corners first. Then I start building the enclosure that wraps around from the front of the house around the back side all the way over to here so here and all the way around the front it's going to be an enclosure around the house which will include the batteries it will be heated by day from the sun radiating on the side of the house and by night from the excess heat from the wood stove in the tiny house now some of you may remember it was 100 degrees in the house in winter with the windows open. That is because my wood stove is very efficient and the house is very insulated. So I will have heat to spare to keep the greenhouse um, slash porch slash battery housing warm at night. Now you might see some bags in here in the window. That's because right now I got the windows closed. I'm going to open them. Right now what I've been doing is I open the windows at night and I have to stuff the bags in because I don't have a window screen for these particular windows. So I, I stuff the shopping bags in at night to seal off between the insert window screen and the edge of the window. Otherwise mosquitoes come in there and I get swarmed. And those shopping bags, when I shove the window closed, they jam down in between the window and the screen, which looks horrible, but I'm the only one seeing it. Now when I open them in a few minutes, they'll come right back up in a position and keep bugs out but that wasn't a topic of this video this video was about the batteries and the battery housing that I will have and maintaining the, the solar powered forklift battery bank uh, as I said half gallon a week especially in this intense heat I do continue to top them off I am no longer checking specific gra gravity because they are never full not because of lack of solar power not that I'm using more power than I'm putting in, but because the batteries never, uh, I, I think there's either a dead cell or, uh, sorry, not a dead cell. There's just something wrong in the chemistry because they're never above 12.2. When I was gone to Ireland and Michigan and I came back, 
these ba this battery was still resting at 12.2 volts with no load for an entire vacation period in full sunny days. So there, the forklift battery definitely is not top notch, but it's doing everything I need it to do right now. And I've been still experimenting and testing it and uh, using it for now. I got it. This other solar panel is on my old forklift batteries. Let's keep that behind there. The uh, this is a 45 watt solar panel that is maintaining the old forklift batteries as a standby. And then I have the um, BLS battery lifesaver permanently attached to the big forklift battery bank, the, uh, the the newer forklift battery bank that is always on and always connected. So. Then in the um, RV, I've got the uh, Klen uh, battery desulfator connected to the golf cart batteries, which I haven't checked since I got back from Ireland. So I need to get in there, fire up the Benini, check the status of those batteries, and uh, get things rolling again. Uh, it's been really hot, and I've been working on the chicken fence and uh, the picket fence, and that's been my my only my only project recently besides cleaning up and. Uh, daily maintenance and work so anyway there you have it forklift batteries solar powered forklift batteries at the off-grid homestead a little bit of an update I will give you a more detailed and full update soon of all the batteries and how much solar I'm pulling in and how much I use so talk to you all later